Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to yet another video on the channel. <laughs> you may have a familiar sight behind me. She's back. Um, it's really nice to finally be sitting in front of her again, you know. Uh, it's quite funny, you know. I drive her almost every single day. Um, yeah, you guys haven't seen her in, in a while. Instead, it's been quite taken over by Gasly the ST over here. <laughs> so... I do apologize to my Honda watchers. Um, I'm trying to gain an audience of the STs here. But anyway, I'm rambling. So, welcome back. So, I've noticed my buyer's guide to the 8th gen and my old review, like my very first video ever on this channel, kind of blown up recently. I'm um, getting a lot of comments, a lot of comments. And... Since it's filtered just so far back, sometimes I don't get those uh, all those comments. It's not that I don't try to get to you. I try to respond to every comment that I see as long as you aren't being a complete a-hole to me. I won't respond to those. Or I'll just give you like a thumbs up emoji or something. I don't waste my time with you. <laughs> but most of you guys are all fantastic. My community, the thousand of you that watch me yap, is fantastic. You guys are awesome. So, this is kind of an update video. This is a long-term review because... In a few weeks, I would have this car for two years now. And that is a huge milestone for me. <laughs> for uh, two reasons. One, I've only had one other car for two years and it's sitting over there and it is for sale. So if any of you guys are interested in a 93 Civic, I'm not even sure you can hear the cars go by anymore since I got the mics, but still, I still like edit them out. They're annoying. If you guys are interested in a 93 uh, Civic Coupe uh, EJ1 EX with a GSR swap, it needs a head gasket, but uh, it's for sale. Uh, $3,400, $3,000, something like that. Hit me up Instagram. But So this is a pretty big deal, and also it would be two years old for, since I started uh, making videos for this YouTube channel, which is huge. Uh, that's such a big deal. It felt like yesterday that I started this. So again, let me stop yapping. And let me get on to what this video is about. This is going to be a two-year overview of the car. A review. Should you get this car in the modern day? Um, or is it a waste? I knocked over my water bottle. Um, or is it a waste? Um, you know, it's 2024. This car is getting older in the age now. It's it's showing its cracks. If you guys can't see the hideous clear coat that is spreading like a plague throughout the car. At some point, clear coat is going to have to come to this car because it is just spreading terribly it's going it's coming to the back now which that you've never used to be there it's on the roof and it's starting to go to the left side the driver's side which is a shame because that side was never touched when i bought it so yikes but it is what it is i'm gonna get into that end of this video so is it worth it is the car any good or should you go with other cars on the market now so let's get into it first of all so I'm going to go over a little overview of the car um, first. If you guys have been watching the channel, you very much know what it is. But this is a 2009 Honda Civic Si. It is an FA5 because it is the sedan. The FG2 is the coupe. Um, they're super, super, super similar. I just think the sedan looks a lot better than the FG2. I think they. it looks like they gave up on the design personally not a huge fan of the coupe and there's a lot more aftermarket support for the sedan so sedan is the where is where it's at um this the eighth gens come from go from 2006 to 2011 um and in 2009 they had a refresh um, a little better transmission a little better synchros i should say and a different front end and a couple other like little baby things otherwise they're pretty much the same thing if you just want to swap the transmission out do like your master cylinder and you like the the front end better on the pre-facelift version go right ahead and do it uh adam which has the red ej1 that i test drove like over a year ago now on the channel and i raced against him in autocross and he whooped me he has a pre-facelift 8th gen, and it looks very nice. That one doesn't have clear coat issues. But 
Um, this car has a 104, almost 147,000 miles on it now. Um, if you guys do remember, I bought it when it had 117,000. So in two years, I put about 30,000 miles on it. Pretty good mileage. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I've been dri I've been driving this thing, so I feel I am a worthy person to tell you how this car is, uh, since I've put in I put 30,000 miles on it. So I feel like I'm okay to talk about it now. <laughs> so I will go over just real quick. It has a two liter inline four. It is the K series that everyone loves um, or loves to hate. Um, it is a K20 Z3. Pretty dang good K series. Uh, I love it to death. It revs to like 8,000, 8,100 stock, um, but in its tuned state, it revs to 8,600. Uh, these motors could easily rev to 9,000 if you get the Type S oil pump from the RSX Type S. Those have a better oil pump. So if you put that on and tune it, you could easily go to 9,000. I'm not sure how reliably, but you can do it. <laughs> Uh, the head won't just blow up, so that's a plus. It also has a six-speed manual, um, and like real cars, this only came in manual transmission. No automatics of the SI were made. So if you're looking like you, if you want a an automatic, you cannot get the SI. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> if you want a new Civic that's uh, automatic, you can get the Sports. Those are automatic, but these are all manual. Uh, the 8th gen is the first generation to have an LSD transmission as well. It does pretty good. The ST over here doesn't even have that, which kind of sucks. And it's a 2016. It's seven years newer, and it doesn't have an LSD, and it has a lot more torque. It's pretty stupid. But this, it does. It's pretty nice. Um, it makes about 197 horsepower to the crank stock, and I think it's around 140 or maybe high 130s on the torque um to the to the crank of course so you lose that power this car it has an intake it has honda Atta, it has a skunk 2 alpha header skunk 2 mega power um rr exhaust meaning it's 76 millimeters full three inch and a short shifter hybrid racing springs in the transmission stuff like that i think that's it and it's pushing 226 horsepower to the wheel and 160 foot pounds of torque the 100 don't let the torque fool you the torque is at 7,000 rpms so it's still just as gutless on the bottom end as it was when it was stock um, but the high end power is really there vtech is at 4,000 rpms stock it is normally at 6,000 stock it is way too high stock but it is at uh it is at 4,000 now, and it's pretty nice. Uh, if you do want to argue about the power, you could contact my tuner. I am not the tuner. I just say what he told me the power numbers were. <laughs> Otherwise, it's pretty pretty stock. I mean, I have stereo system, and that short shifter is really nice. Otherwise, I very much know how the car is. I have suspension now. I have BCs, uh, a big sway bar in the rear, and I, I think that's it. I really do. <laughs> I really do at this point. I think I cover the basis as quick as I can, pretty much. So, really, let's let's get into... Let's just start with exterior. Let's get the uh, elephant out of the room. Uh, the car is not the prettiest thing to look at. And I don't mean in design. I think the design of the 8th gen is pretty timeless, actually. It's, it's quite old now, you know. 2006 was the first year we're sitting at... Mm -hmm. oof. Mm -hmm. Man, I'm, I'm stupid. We're almost sitting at, we're sitting at 18 years since the first 8th gen came out. It's getting old now, and it still looks super, super good. Um, I mean, honestly, uh, I think it's curved in all the right spots. It's a very curvy car, and quite honestly, curvy cars stand the test of time much better than, than really angular cars. I'm really curious how the FK8 is going to look in, in the future, but... I mean, there are a lot of, of really sharp cars now. <laughs> it's quite insane. Like the EJ1 or the EG Civics, the EG6, they all look timeless and look great. It's because there's not that many sharp lines on them. They're pretty curvy. Uh, there are some sharp lines in parts where you need them. And the, uh, right above the door handle, there's that, that nice line, that nice angular line makes it look good. The mirrors are, are a little more angular angular than they should the rear is when it gets a little more angular and more square on the rear but has some nice nice curves 
um, from the trunk down to the, the bumper here. Um, it's just a nice curvy car with nice, subtle, aggressive lines telling you that it isn't just uh, a Civic LX going down the road. It looks very nice. And you got the little nice SI badges. I'm not sure that you could see, but right there. Um, they look really, really nice and timeless. It's just the, the problem with 8th Gen Civics and almost every single one of them, unless you found a garage-kept one in pristine condition, or that was resprayed, is their paint quality control... How do I say this? Uh, it blew. <laughs> it sucked. Um, absolutely sucked. Sadly, there there was a recall um, back in the day for the paint. But if you didn't get it, I think if it was within two years or something, you couldn't get it. So, obviously, this car did not go back to get the recall um, in the two years. And uh, now I'm stuck with a plagued car it almost looks like it has leprosy and it is spreading <laughs> i mean it is what it is uh i mean out of all things i'll take it i guess it's not like and these do these cars do have problems with rust a lot of times again because it's paint related you know if your clear coat's fading and you have no clear coat there and your paint is fading you're gonna start maybe something's gonna start eating at your paint you're gonna get rust no bueno rust is cancer for cars so if you are going to be going to look at one please look for rust um there's two spots on this car with a little bit of surface rust that i need to to buff out but it's nothing nothing bad it's a very structural sounded car other than that i just have stupid things like there's paint chipping above my exhaust because it gets really hot there um the last owner did something and it's banged up right there uh, and my front bumper is messed up. It looks like he ran into something and then decided to back out of that thing. So I got holes in the front bumper, but I mean, really it doesn't give off a, like a super clean look uh, unless you only look at the left side when it's clean. Um, but that's just like a, my car basis. Um, the cars themselves, I think hold up very well and the premium wheels on the SIs, uh, look extraordinary and i think these premium wheels only came on the facelifted ones uh, i think the wheels look absolutely fantastic to be honest that's hence why they're still on the car <laughs> i've had it for two years now and it still has stock wheels it has modded motor it has short shifter it has a stereo it has suspension but it still has stock wheels because i think they frankly just look good sure i would like some rpf ones because i'm a basic bitch but at the same time, I kind of don't want to spend the money on them because I just like the way these look the way it is, to be honest with you. And I don't want to spend a ton of money on wheels and tires, so they kind of stick with it. I think they're a timeless look. I think they look great sitting. And when they're rolling, they almost look better. They they shimmer in the sun, and they have a nice little angle to them, so it makes them have like a depth to them when, they're, when you're driving. They're not just straight on. They look very nice, so... That's about it. On the exterior, there's not much. You get to use your opinion and see the way you like. Um, so let's get to the interior real fast. Interior is very comfortable. It's very nice. There's a lot of places to put your stuff at. Cup holders are absolutely fantastic, to be honest. I've never been in a Honda with better cup holders. Um, mind you, I've never been in like really new Hondas, but really good. Um, I think the interior is awesome and unique. It's the, it's the first generation of the Civic that really went through that. That double dash system with the, the speedo, your fuel, your temperatures, your uh, shifting light and everything on the top and your tack and all your other info on the bottom. Uh, looks quite awesome. It's really cool. The shifter's in the perfect position. It's awesome. It, you, your elbow doesn't hit the center console like some other cars <clears throat> in my that I own. Um, the seats are very comfortable. They're not like the most bolstered things, but they're way better than just a bench seat that are in a lot of cars that aren't sporty at all or are trying to be sporty that aren't bolstered. Um, a lot of red stitching throughout the car. It's black, red stitching, has the SI in the seats. That's all I'm going to say about the interior. Very nice. The stock shifter is pretty great, but mine's better now. <laughs> uh, that's about it. All I could say about that, I do got to say, wait, that the plastics on the e-brake always break mine sadly cracked so it, it looks like it's gonna fall off if i just rip on it and don't pay any attention but thankfully i'm very uh, aware that it's about to break off so i'm very careful with it so moving on from that we're getting to motor and reliability Ooh, this is the the big one 
By the way, guys, do you like my loafers? I think they're quite comfortable, and uh, they're, I call them the Arts and Senna loafers. They're not brown, but I race my NSX in the back around all the time with these, so they're pretty cool. <laughs> the motor, though, motor's fantastic, man. I mean, really. Um, I've said over and over and over again that I'm going to K24 swap it, and, and I'm going to do, or I'm going to do a K24 or K2024 Frankenstein build on it with the K24 bottom, the K20 top. And to be fair, that would be awesome. And I would love to do that at some point, especially if this motor shits out on me. It's kind of gonna gonna happen. If that if that happens, then that is uh, where I'm gonna go with it. But honestly, it's just so perfect, man. Um, reliability. I mean, problems that I've run into in the two years of ownership, thirty thousand miles, or getting to the higher range of mileage, uh, one hundred and forty seven thousand. The only stuff I've had to do to it is my mods. Um, the only thing that has ever went out on it was my starter. It did go through a starter, and I do got to say, the starter was super annoying to do. Uh, it was very annoying, but got that done. That's it, honestly. Um, except general maintenance stuff that I do got to mention is like, I've done my oil changes uh, every time uh, on the service interval. I don't exactly know what the interval is. I'm sorry. I'm a bad YouTuber. Um, <laughs> I just go off of the actual oil interval on the dash because it has one. And now it's screaming at me because I'm at 10% life on this oil. So I need to do that real soon. Um, but I've done uh, oil filters from Honda. Genuine OEM uh, oil filters. And I've done... Uh, I am using 5W40 uh, Rosetta oil uh, for the tune. Because if you guys don't know, uh, K20s a lot of time like to burn oil. It is just a thing that they like to do. If you don't know, uh, since these cars do rev so high, uh, Honda did not want to have reliability issues with the motors failing because it's such it would cause such high friction if you can think about it you know the pistons are going up and down so fast especially going coming going to 8,000 rpms um stock with no modification it's a lot of friction in there and so to make sure uh you weren't destroying your cylinder walls or your rings they made this the piston rings with a softer uh metal composite which means some oil does get by, or it may burn some oil. Um, some of them, some SIs don't burn any, and a lot, a lot, a lot do. Sadly, mine does. Uh, my tuner told me to run 5W40 oil. Uh, I've been running that since I got it tuned. It burns oil way, 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 way less, and it's fantastic. So doing that, um, that's only stuff I've had to do. I've done spark plugs once. Um, and there was a, there was oil in one of the spark plug wells. So I had to get a, to seal underneath one of the coil packs. Uh, I had to get one of those and then that was gone. And then I did a valve adjustment. Uh, I think about probably like six months after I owned the car, it was ticking pretty loud. Uh, K20s tend to just tick, um, a lot as it is. They're just kind of ticky motors and line fours most of the time. They take a lot, uh, but this one was, it was getting pretty loud and I don't, there, there's a valve adjustment interval and, uh, I think, what is it? 40,000 miles or so. Maybe it's even more than that, but, uh, I doubted this car's ever had that. So we did that and it was way quieter. So that's it. I mean, I mean, of everything, reliability for this thing has been fantastic and it is such a fun, visceral engine. It is fully just a raw experience um and that's why these things are so sought after and i'll get into that in a little bit um they're not torquey at all and that's why many people want to go k24 bottom end uh the k24 is obviously 0.4 uh liters bigger it's more displacement so you get a lot more torque down low um than the k20 here uh but the k20 Revs a lot higher, and the high end is much better. The head flows way, way better. Um, so a lot of people, including what I want to do at some point in life, and, and when I do it, the channel will definitely know, 
is put the K20 head onto a 24 block and you get the torque and you get the high flowing head. It is an amazing, amazing mixture. And since it is a K20 uh, and it's a Honda, the mod support for this motor is absolutely ridiculous. It's a great sounding motor. The intake sounds are outrageous. The VTEC sounds awesome uh, because this is the last SI generation to have true, true uh VTEC crossover meaning intake and exhaust cam uh in the head engage VTEC uh it's not just one side and it's naturally aspirated so even though it's not a fast car um I wouldn't call it slow either I'm talking to you FA5 Sean <laughs> he owns one too and he says it's slow um I disagree I don't think they're slow I think they're just not fast. They're quick. They're momentum cars, as Honda always has been. Um, you get it up into third gear, and then you're kind of really moving out. And if you can keep the speed up, keep the RPMs high, especially in some curvy roads, it's going to be a hard car to beat in the twisties. It's just quick like that. And it's super fun. So it's quick. It's not fast. It's a very fun experience. And it's a heavier car. We're, we're, we're running 3,000 pounds here. We're not running 2,000 pounds like the old Hondas. Hence why everyone, that's why K-Swap the world is a thing. Huge aftermarket support, really strong motors, and uh, put it into a lightweight chassis and obliterate the world. It's like the LS swap for the inline four world. <laughs> so I guess moving away from reliability, I just gotta say it's a ten out of ten. I mean, honestly, just just stupid stuff that you gotta you gotta do sometimes. And I haven't even had to do a clutch. Um, I think that might be coming up soon. I think I felt it slip one time, um, but it's just it's fantastic. I mean, it's getting older, so you might find a little bit of weird things every once in a while i think my shifter cables are getting a little bit worn uh just stupid stuff i mean it's it's getting old now and it's getting higher up in the mileage because i drive it every day it's the daily so i get to live with it and i get to be very picky and nitpicky with it because i know this car like the back of my hand at this point so getting away from motor and reliability i'll touch on mod support real fast it's insane. There's not much more to say. If you're looking for something or want to do something to it, it's probably made. You probably don't have to worry about it. If you are worried about mod support, don't be. It's everywhere. And if you want to motor swap it, someone's probably done it already. So you could find a kit for it. It's the simplest thing ever. So that was the fastest segment um, ever. kind of already told you. K-Swaps, K24, K2420... Uh, I've seen some crazy stuff in here. I think I've seen a J-swap in these for some reason. That's dumb, but I've seen it done. You want to turbo it? You want to supercharge it? You want to twin charge it? I've seen that done. Uh, you want to all-wheel drive swap it? Saw someone do that too. Uh, it's quite literally everything. So moving on. So next up is going to be pretty quick as well because uh, I already went through service interval, but miles per gallon, MPG. Um, if you expect it to be super good because it is a Honda, kind of be disappointed here it's not great i actually expected it to be better um than it was it's not the best uh to be honest with you it's not v8 <laughs> it's not v8 status old v8 v8 status or, or old v6 um but it's not great um the worst i've ever seen though is 22 miles per gallon um so again I've never gotten to the ones, you know, I've never gotten into the teens. I've never got 19 ever. My lowest I got was 19, uh, 22 and I was hitting on it pretty good. Uh, best I've ever gotten was 30 or 31. And that was pure interstate travel. Uh, when you are sitting on the interstate in these cars, they do very well. I'd say my average is 24 to 26. Uh, 26 is a extremely good one when I'm really baby. Now I don't hit VTEC ever. And I'm purely trying to go as smooth as I can, highway as I can. Uh, but my commute is not all highway. It's a lot of curvies. It's some towns and and highway. So 26 is the highest. But lately, I've been getting 25. Uh, 24 is pretty, pretty normal, though. Um, if you're running normal oil, like 5W30, I'd say you'd be running 26 or so. Uh, 27 possibly, uh, but ever since I ran to the thicker oil, I've been getting a little less gas mileage. You know, it's working a little harder to get 
um, to get past that thicker oil. So you lose a little bit of miles per gallon, but it's worth it for me for having thicker oil. I don't have to worry about it thinning out and I don't have to worry about it burning so much. So that's miles per gallon. It's not, it's not great. It's more miles per gallon than miles per gallon. So don't expect it to be like a D15 single cam uh, EG or something. So now let's get into actually driving it. Uh, city driving, highway driving, and back road driving. And maybe some track or some autocross. Um, it's fun. <laughs> like I said, it's a... It's funny, I keep saying it's an older car and a newer car, an older car and a newer car. When I mean newer car, I mean it's it's OBD2. So to me, <laughs> OBD2 is newer car, you know. Um, my Fiesta is the newest car I've ever owned. It's a 2016 uh, but before that, this was, uh, 2009, you know, I grew up on only 80s and 90s cars, so this was newer for me. Electronic power steering, um, a lot of sensors, OBD2, I could literally scan the car and figure out what it is. I don't have to count blanks on an ECU or an engine light. Um, and tire pressure sensors that, by the way, I absolutely hate. They suck. Um, <laughs> but all this, um, so... It's pleasant, but for that, it's still a raw experience, like I said a million times. The motor is very raw, it's very visceral, it's very loud and mechanical, and the shifter is fantastic, because Honda and Porsche are the name of the game for manual transmissions all around the world. They aren't mushy or numb, they are fantastic. Uh, this is, Even the stock suspension is pretty good. Um, it can get soft at times, but I mean... It feels nice, but you throw some coilovers on it and a camber kit so you don't hovercraft the, the rear end. It's fantastic, and it just does it so well. So city driving is kind of, I feel city driving is when this thing is most at its detriment. Uh, because again, it doesn't have the torque. We're probably hit, we're probably at like 130 foot pounds of torque on a 3,000 pound car in the city because I'm not revving it to 7,000 RPMs in the middle of town because that is the worst thing ever and that is obnoxious. I'm not the stereotypical you're uh, the Civic at 3 a.m. at <laughs> in your neighborhood. So that's ridiculous. But that's where the miles per gallon tank um, is just going stoplight to stoplight. You're stuck in traffic. It's because you got to you got to get it going, and it is a six-speed, and it's a it's a close ratio six-speed. You know, it's not, you know, it doesn't have the torque, so the gearbox is pretty close together. So you're constantly shifting it, constantly shifting it, which is fun. I'm not getting, I'm not saying it's not fun. I love driving manuals, so that's cool. But when you have to constantly do it in town or in traffic, it gets really annoying. And especially when you don't have the torque and you got to rev it till about 4,000, that's when gas mileage kills it. But it's still fun, um, but it's kind of ridiculous because, I mean, you'll get beat by a, a, a Prius because they, they floor it and it's an automatic and they just quietly buzz past you as you're like <laughs> just almost cracking into VTEC trying to get it to go and watch your fuel gauge go down. City driving is when it's at its least, but it's still super fun to hear it and to shift through the gears. You have your windows cracked and hear it, and you can get some people looking at you and, and giving you a thumbs up or calling you a ricer or, or whatever. There's almost no middle ground either. People love it and give you a thumbs up or they give you a thumbs down and flip you off. There's almost no middle ground there. You get dirty looks from old people in some sort of stupid car. Um, it's just kind of the way it goes. Um, city driving is its detriment, as sad as that is. Um, not saying it's not fun. Highway does just fine. So she going into an on ramp is where the fun is. Connect that VTEC, go th row through them gears. Third gear is a god gear on almost every Honda I've ever had, especially this one. And you can go well past the speed limit um, and then realize, uh oh, I need to slow down. And then you're cruising. Uh, cruise control is in this car. It's fantastic. It works great. And it's uh, fun. I mean, highway is this highway. You're going in a straight line, but it does well. It has enough power to get out of its own way if you downshift. If you're in sixth gear, which is very much an overdrive gear, you can't just floor it in sec to get by someone in a quick pace because there's no torque again. Torque is its biggest detriment of this car. Um, so you got to downshift it to fifth, maybe even fourth if you're going uphill. Otherwise, one little downshift, get by the guy, pop it back in sixth. Um, unless they're going in very slow and you see it way ahead of time, just give it a little throttle and it'll go. 
I'm acting like it's the slowest thing on the planet. It's not. If you're in six geared, you need to just go up by a few miles an hour, give it some throttle, and it'll go. But if someone, yeah, if someone's real slowing, slowing down, you got to get by fast because someone's coming up on your left side, you're going to want to downshift one or two times. Um, and that's just the way it goes. Biggest deal, though. Curvy roads, track driving, autocross, car is amazing. Uh, it just is. Uh, in autocross, the only guy that beat me in my class is in an 8th Gen SFA 5. Uh, they're very good. Um, in curvy roads, it's fantastic. Like I said, they're not fast cars. They're momentum cars. They're quick cars. And if you are good and you know lines and you know braking well, you know how the engine does, and you're not an idiot on a back road, um, you can be very fast in these cars. They're Again, they're momentum cars. If you can keep the momentum up and the RPMs up, they are fast. And there's not much that can keep up with you if you're smart about it, uh, unless they are really just really good in a very fast car. Uh, it's a fun car. I mean, I beat a yellow C5 Corvette. Uh, the guy was very upset on the back roads. He thought he was hot stuff because he had a V8. And it was yellow and all that. And he saw a Civic and wanted to beat it. And he didn't. He wasn't too happy. So it's super fun. It is its best, best times. Um, I have plenty of POV videos on this channel. If you want to see um, this car in back roads, it does super well. I might go do another one at some point for you guys. It'd be cool. Coming into the stuff no one wants to hear. The price point in the market for these cars. <sighs> This is when it gets a little hard to explain because I don't know where you live. Here in the Pacific Northwest, though, and from what most I hear, except some of you guys' states, some of the video, some of the comments you guys leave me, you guys are lucky. Um, but these are going up in price by quite a bit. Uh, luckily, they are not rare. Most of the time, anywhere that I know of, you look them up on the marketplace, Craigslist, Craigslist. Craigslist's really heavy. <laughs> you need to watch out for that guy in the gym. Craigslist, um, offer up all this stuff, you know, uh, your local listings. Most of the time, you'll find an 8th Gen SI. They're not that rare. So, thankfully, you will find them. It's They aren't super, they're not rare. Um, just finding one for a good price, though. These damn cars. Interrupting my videos. <laughs> Finding for a good price, though, and in good shape and not trying to hide something, and that's when it gets rough. Um, the really clean ones are getting really expensive, especially if you want a Fuji Blue one. Good luck. They're expensive. But honestly, it, it's going to be hard to find one for less than... 10 9 grand at this point for one that's any good and if you want to really if you want a really clean one expect to play more than 10 grand it's getting quite ridiculous i got lucky with this car i found it for 7000 with 117000 miles on it bone stock i got a really good deal on it um and that was that was nice uh but it's really hard to find that anymore it's getting really ridiculous actually um, so what to look out for, just um, make sure you have you or the guy driving it. Make sure they get close to the red line and bang into the next gear for the synchros. Look for rust, especially on the roof and the, the bottom of the doors. Wherever rust likes to come in the fender wells, um, the roof especially, they like to get a lot of rust in there. Check your trunk seals. Um, check to make sure you see no huge oil leaks. Uh, make sure you don't see a off of smoke coming out the back because uh, these burn oil but I only ever see like a little puff of smoke sometimes for the most part it doesn't so if it's blowing smoke don't if you see a lot of rust don't if it's grinding and going into second or third gear on high RPMs don't get it and don't try to like gaslight yourself and say, well, I just will take it easy with RPMs. No, this motor is literally made to go into the high RPMs. That's stupid. That's kind of what to look out for. Um, I have a whole buyer's guide. Watch that one if you want to see more. Um, but otherwise, just the normal car stuff. Um, make sure the brakes are good. These need new, This car needs new brakes soon. Uh, but really, that's it. 
big no big oil leaks no rust make sure the transmission is any good otherwise have at it and i'm sorry make sure you have around nine to ten grand laying around to get a clean example uh, make sure the mods if you buy one with mods are not cheap mods and just thrown on make sure it didn't look like a, a 16 year old threw uh auto zone specials at it because then that gives you an idea on how it was treated so find a really clean stock one or one or a pretty nice expensive one that has really quality parts on it i know i know um if you had a lot of money it'd be easier but it, sadly these are going up in price they're the last true si they're the last one with dual vtech and that's what people love very much so wish you luck let me know how it goes um and then lastly i do want to say what other cars look out for if you guys can't find one what's what's your next choice maybe get that in your brain this may be your first option but if there's just nothing around you first of all be patient um something will show up or go if you find one someone's driveway knock on their door and ask what's it gonna hurt um but What's other options? Uh, I'd say the 9th Gen SI is a very good option. Um, my most viewed video, actually, is comparing them. So if you want to watch that, that would be cool. The 9th Gen does not rev as high, uh, but that is not that much. And it doesn't have true VTEC. You can't really hear it that much, but it's not a detriment to it. It is a extremely fun car. It technically has more power around the board. It has more horsepower and it has more torque, like a lot more torque. It's like 180 at like 35 or 4,000 RPMs. It's a lot more. It's a super fun car. It's more modern. They're newer. Um, they have like, I don't, do they have Apple CarPlay? I can't remember, but it has uh, wireless, uh, wireless whatever media <laughs> the the 2014s have a blind spot indication on the passenger mirror uh they're just b b fantastic cars frankly they're really nice um and the same guy yash tuned that tuned my car tunes ninth gens like a beast they're fantastic cars and i'm pretty sure you could swap uh a k24a2 head on it i'm pretty sure and get true vtech that way so if you do want an si and you can't Find an 8th gen that's worth a damn because it just they're all terrible. 9th gen's a good option. Um, a Fiesta ST is a really good option. I know it's very much not in totally the same category, and I'm biased because there's one next to me, but I I have fallen in love with this car. It handles better. I think it's more go karty. It really darts in the directions you want it to go way better. Uh, the brakes are a lot better. It's lighter. Uh, and a lot more torque. It's a 1.6 liter turbocharged motor, um, and it has a lot of torque. It makes around the same horsepower basically as the SI stock. It makes, I think it makes 200 or 199 one horsepower, uh, but it makes 203 foot pounds of torque, uh, and it comes on at like 3,000. So it's very nice. <laughs> so don't maybe look into that. I mean, honestly, these are going down in price a little bit, the Fiestas, before they go back up because they don't make them anymore. Um, but you could find clean examples. I got my ST for $10,000, and that's about what the same price these are going for. Um, so don't count that off. Um, just look around, man. Uh, some Mazda speeds are really cool at this point anymore. Maybe some older Civics, uh, unless you can get really lucky and find a Knight's 10th Gen, too. And don't count out the EP3 SI. Those are the cheapest SI ever, because the K series in that one is really low power, and they're odd looking. They are the cheapest SI you can buy on this market. It's absolutely insane. It's kind of criminal. Um, you can get them for insanely cheap and easily swap a k24 or this motor into it it's absolutely outrageous so if you want an si and want to mod it or use it as a project uh you can't afford this go with an ep3 oh my gosh would it be great but I'm not trying to get i'm not trying to say that you shouldn't get this this car is absolutely fantastic if you could find one um that is worth the money um get it is it worth it in 2024? Oh, hell yeah, it is. I I still love this car very much. It's been two years, and uh, most of the time when I get in this car, I'm not, like, bored of it. I'm not like, man, I wish I had a new car. 
No, it still feels new to me sometimes. It, it still surprises me with what it does sometimes. It's uh, insanely fun. Um, and it's really fun to show people what it can do. Because a lot of people just don't know. They see a lot of eighth gens of normal ones that don't know SIs. And you give them rides and they love it. And it just sounds heavenly, to be honest. The K-Series is something else. So, should you buy it in 2024? Is it a good car? Oh, yeah. But buyer beware. There's a lot of stinkers out there. 100%. So, I gave you some options of maybe some other ones to buy. Maybe you haven't even thought about the ninth gen. Maybe I put that on your radar. So maybe check that out. So that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you're looking for an EJ1 Civic, I got one for sale. Hit me up. Um, I hope you guys all enjoyed. Hopefully I'll get a POV of this car very soon. I hope to see you guys in another video very soon. I got a track day in the ST coming up th later this month. So keep an eye out for that. It's my very first track day in a car. I did competitive go-karting for a while. Um, years ago, but now this will be the first time ever on a track in a car. So I'm pumped. With that being said, hit the like button, hit that subscribe button. Thank you all so much for the subscribers. We're almost at 1.2k subs, which is huge. Uh, one almost 1.2k of you want to see me yap about cars, so that's awesome. So, with that being said, yapper is gonna go away now. Uh, hope you guys take it easy, have a good one, and happy hunting for an eighth gen. Peace out.